Hello, I'm Elliot Berger, Senior Scientist, Auditory Research for Aero Technologies, and I have been working with foam earplugs since they were invented in the 1970s. We have learned much since then about how to use them well and how effective they can be. This brief five-minute video was created to share that information in order to optimize your wearing experience. In the next few minutes, I'd like to explain to you some of the features of using a foam earplug to get the best comfort and the best protection. Although foam earplugs are relatively easy to use for fine performance, if you pay attention to these details, they'll work a lot better for you. With a foam plug, unlike another piece of foam, for example, a bathroom sponge, which you squash and knead and squeeze, with a foam plug, there's a particular way that you want to prepare it for insertion. You want to roll it into a very tiny, tightly compressed cylinder. Now, some people like to roll it along their fingers like this. Other people like to roll it around their fingers. Some people, because they need some extra finger strength, will use both hands. The only thing that doesn't work because it causes a distorted and creased plug is to roll it between the palms of your hands. So I prefer rolling it like this, and this is how I will demonstrate it for you. I'm going to roll it slowly without squeezing it too hard at first. As the plug gets smaller and smaller, I'm going to squeeze it harder and harder. The reason I don't squeeze too hard at first is because I don't want to squash it into a shape that will have creases or wrinkles. I'd like it to be very round and smooth so it's rolling up and down my fingers in a very smooth manner. As I get it small, I want to squeeze it as hard as I possibly can, and I'm not exaggerating. I seriously mean that this is your morning finger exercises. You want to squeeze this plug as hard as you possibly can so that you have a tiny crease-free cylinder that you can then put into your ear. The other part of inserting this plug or any other ear plug is that you're going to want to reach over your head with the hand opposite the ear that's being fitted and grasp your ear firmly and pull it outwards and upwards. The reason that we do that, as you see here, is that as we pull on the ear, it changes the opening of the ear canal. You can see how now I have my ear opened rather widely and it will be easier for me to get a plug in. For different people, the direction may vary somewhat, but in all cases, you will be grabbing the ear between the thumb and forefingers and pulling it away from the side of your head. So you roll the plug down while you have the plug well compressed. You keep rolling it. You bring it up to your ear. And now while you're holding the pinna, you insert the plug in the ear canal. There's no reason to hold the plug because once you've put it in your ear properly, it will expand in place to give you a custom, comfortable fit. One of the likeliest causes of a bad insertion of a foam ear plug is that it has been inadequately rolled down or it has been allowed to expand too much before it was brought up for insertion to the ear. What this looks like is that someone will come up to the ear with a plug inadequately compressed and then try and force it into the ear canal. It won't slide into the canal any more than it will slide out of the canal. And you can see how it looks like it's expanding out of my ear. Actually, it's simply regaining its original uncompressed shape. One gauge that's helpful to judge the fit of a foam ear plug is where the back of the plug sits relative to this little bump in front of the ear, which is called the tragus. You can see that in this case, where the plug has been poorly fitted, that much of it is outside the tragus and filling this part of the ear, which is called the concha. When a plug has been properly inserted, you can see that from this angle, you can barely see that there's any foam in my ear. I'm going to turn my head for you now slowly, and you can see how the plug has been well fitted into the ear canal. It's lost well behind the tragus. This part of the ear called the concha has no foam in it. The foam is in the ear canal itself. You can also use your finger for this test by feeling the back of the plug relative to the tragus. Another way to assess the fit of foam earplugs is to allow them to expand in your ear for about a minute or so, and then to remove them and examine the plug or read the plug, if you will, because at this point, the plug will be providing a custom impression of your ear. On this plug, what you can see is that there's a wrinkle, and that wrinkle is actually a sound channel, which could let sound in along the side of the plug. So that's not been a well-fitted earplug. Now, on this earplug, the tip of it has been mashed back a little bit. I would like to see the end of the plug blunt and square, indicating that it had been allowed to be inserted fully and to expand to fill the canal. This one had been pushed in a little bit at the end and was running into the canal wall. On this one, you can see that about one half of it has been inserted into the ear canal. 
Uh, you can see by the bend here, there's no creases or wrinkles. So that is a well-fitted foam ear plug. Thank you for your time. And now it's up to you. Try my suggestions. Be willing to practice and pay attention to your ears. You will be rewarded with a lifetime of good listening.